Super caps in a power supply? Well, Richard in Belfast, Ireland is asking, Paul, I watched your video on unregulated power supplies for power amps, and I wonder if there would be anything gained by using super caps instead of electrolytic caps, or a mixture of both to smooth the AC. Also, instead of a traditional power supply, would it not be better using a large lithium battery like a Tesla perhaps combined with super caps for stable voltage supply. I really enjoy your videos, which always makes things understandable, and an interesting, uh, uh, for an interesting amateur like me. Well, good. I love interesting amateurs because at the end of the day, aren't we all? <laughs> Some of us are interesting amateurs that make a living at things, and others pretend to be professionals because I don't know why they do, but at the end of the day, we're all amateurs. Okay, uh, well, let's talk about super caps. So, super caps are kind of cool. They are big by magnitudes in terms of their capacitance. So, a typical electrolytic capacitor in a power supply might have 15,000 or 20,000 microfarads, right? But a super cap might have one farad. And so micro is like, what is it, a thousandth of, of, of a farad? And so one farad is huge. Now, typically, these super caps are low voltage. They're, I don't know that I've ever seen a super cap that is high voltage, high enough. So a power amp, a typical power amp, you're going to have 60, 70, 100 volts on the power supply. And I've never seen, I don't think they exist, to have super caps that are that high voltage. Typically, they're used in computers and areas where they're 5 volts or 10 volts. Now, I know Jeff Rowland, our friend down the street in Colorado Springs from Jeff Rowland Audio, he has a super cap supply, as I remember, and what I believe Jeff does is takes the highest voltage super caps he can find and then series them all, because when you series a capacitor, one, one in series after another, you can get higher voltage. So two 5 volt caps in series, you can have a 10 volt cap, although you're cutting the capacitance in half you got loads of capacitance to go, so don't worry about that. If you, you know, if you had um, uh, 10, 10, 10 volt super caps in series, you could put 100 volts across there and still be, I mean, you'd have great capacitance. And it's a good idea. I think it's, you know, why not? Uh, Jeff certainly thinks it's worth his time to do it. He has a whole box full of super caps. I've never played too much with them. That's a little over the top for what we do. Not that I wouldn't, but just having a completely separate power supply like that at the moment maybe is a little overkill for us. Um, now, lithium batteries, wow. You know, there's a whole cult of people who don't want anything plugged into the wall that the lowest noise, the best regulation is going to be battery powered. And, you know, it's a small, dedicated niche group out there that really buy into that. <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with that. I, you know, I mean, I drive a Tesla. And I got to tell you, that sucker can just, you know, put the energy out and kick your butt back in the seat. I mean, it's, it's wild. And, yeah, I, I would have no problem with that. I mean, you have the issues of charging, you have the issues associated with the battery where they don't last all that time. I mean, for me, I guess I'm a more practical kind of guy. We can build power supplies that sound amazing and they plug into the wall. Could we do better with super caps? Could it be a little quieter, maybe a lot quieter with batteries? Sure, but those are kind of off the wall. And hey, you're an amateur. Go for it, because I think it's a cool idea. All right. Thanks for the question, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.